as we edge closer to the European Championships, the question on everybody's lips is, can Sweden win Euro 2020? In this video, we're going to see just how far they can go in this summer's spectacular. Right, folks, back once again with another video. Today, it's all about Euro 2020 as we take a look at a nation's hopes of the tournament this summer. We'll see just how far they get, of course, in my eyes, uh, when the tournament kicks off in June. We'll talk about that in a minute. Of course, a big shout out to the VIPs, the patrons behind the scenes. Thank you for your continued support. I do appreciate that, guys. And of course, if you want to join yourselves, check out the links down below, patreon.com forward slash. But today, it's all about... Sweden, that's right, boys and girls. Hopefully, by the end of this video, we're going to answer a couple of questions. Can Sweden win Euro 2020? And, of course, will Sweden win Euro 2020? Well, I like Sweden. I'm going to open, I'm just declaring that straight off the, off the bat. I do like Sweden. And, of course, uh, they are one of my uh, sort of uh, uh, fringe, fringe nations that I like to see them do very, very well. Because they're a traditional kind of team. A team that kind of goes under the radar. Of course, you've got your powerhouses over in Europe. You've got your Germany. You've got your France. You've got your Italy. You've got your Spain. Sweden kind of go under the radar each and every major international tournament. The World Cup, the Euros. They just, they just flutter under the radar. Nobody backs them. It's kind of like a little bit like Russia. But you know what? I think Sweden has a good chance this Euros to cause some problems. But how did they get there? As Group F runners up, of course, uh, behind the likes of their fellow group member. That is, of course, Spain. That's right. They'll be playing them again. Of course, they played each other a couple of times in this group. Uh, Sweden, just the one defeat for their, for their, for the, to their name. Of course, that one defeat was against Spain in Spain. However, when they played each other in Sweden, guess what? It was a draw. That's right, 1-1 one, one in the end. In fact, so Spain only had the one defeat. And then they were a good represent a good represent a good representation for them out in this group. Because Norway going through a bit of a golden generation themselves. Romania also going through a bit of a resurgence themselves as well. So two fellow reasonably strong nations, of course, challenging uh, both Spain and Sweden to get themselves through to the Euro. So fair play for Sweden for standing up to the count there. And of course, and they did it. They did it without their key man. I'll talk about that in a minute, of course. They sealed the deal on the 15th of November 2019. They are back in the championship for a, a seventh time for them. Uh, of course, their recent uh, run of run of uh, tournaments, of course, stretches back to 1992. They were there in 2000, 2004, 2008, 2012 and 2016. So they've been there what one two three four five six tournaments in a row and of course uh their best ever performance was a fourth place finish in 1992 their manager is of course Yanni Anderson that's right and of course like I said they got to this stage without their key man and he is back he is back and of course he's back for the World Cup qualifying campaign he's back for this one is is Latan he is back goodness gracious me and I am all about this I am all about this for me you know, England should look at bringing Vardy in. I'm not putting Vardy in the same bracket as Latan, but you've got to have your best players. Whether they've, they've you know, you, and we want to see the Ronaldo for Portugal. We want to see the Sergio Ramoses for, for, for Spain. We want to see uh, the Hummels, the, the Mullers for Germany. But of course, they're, you know, these guys, uh, the Mullers and the, and, the, and, the, and the Hummels for Germany will not be there. But Zlatan will, if he, if of course the recent inclusion in the World Cup qualifying campaigns uh, are anything to go by. You're having him in available for the Euros this summer, having him av potentially available for Qatar 2022 just next year. I think is a good uh, a chance for, of course. For, Sp for Sweden to do very, very well in this, of course. Uh, so, yeah, having him back, it will be great. And hopefully we'll see him score some goals in the World Cup qualifying campaign as well. But they finished strongly in this group, which is great to see. Where did they uh, finish, though, in a comparison to all the other nations? We'll have a little look. There they are, finishing in 17th. Ahead uh, of the Czechs and fellow uh, uh, qualified countries, Wales and Finland. Behind, though, their fellow Scandinavians are the Danes and, of course, Turkey uh, to boot. Of course, let's take a look at their passage potentially to the latter stages. They'll be in Group E, and like I said, uh, with fellow uh, qualifying nation Spain. So they'll be playing them again. And, of course, remember, they did pick up a draw against them when they played in Sweden. However, they also take on uh, heavyweights. Poland, of course, ain't going to be here just to make up the numbers. A decent sort of uh, nation as well. And, of course, Slovakia who did uh, squeeze through on the squeaky back door that is the playoffs so what about Sweden's chances then of course their matches look like this they'll take on uh, Spain in match number one on the 14th of June and it'll be in Spain I believe 
Uh, yes, Sweden will, of course, be based. Where are they going to be based at? Uh, they're going to be based out in uh, Ireland. Is that right? They can still be based out in Ireland. That's a bit of a travelling. Travelling. I don't know about that. We'll, we'll have to confirm that uh, as we get closer to the tournament. But, of course, Spain will be based out in Spain. But, of course, uh, the Swedes will be uh, not there. Uh, but, of course, the much, vast majority of these games, where are they going to be taking the place? Um, let's have a little look at it, shall we? They're going to be played in uh, Dublin. They will be played in Dublin. <laughs> we felt in Bilbao. So, unfortunately for the Irish... They will, at least they're not in the tournament, but they'll get to watch it, uh, potentially. Uh, the likes of Zlatan against Ramos, which will be a, uh, an absolute banger. They won't they won't see that because that will be a game in Spain. Regardless of all that, must-win game, though, for Sweden is uh, against... Um, have I got them against? I think it's Slovakia. Slovakia is the must-win game. Um, if they, they they do will take on Spain in match number one, but if they beat Slovakia, that's three points in the bag, and of course that's one step closer to the of course the knockout stages. The top two qualify automatically. The third is a bit of a, a bit of a lucky dip, bit of a lotto. Uh, but if you get the three points, that puts you one step closer. And then if you get a point against the Polish or against the Spanish, guess what? You're probably on your way to the latter stages. And I think Sweden are a, a nation that you want to avoid. We saw in the World Cup they're, they're a side that could go very very far uh, in, in, in the latter stages if they were given the opportunity to get there uh, so what about the bookies then what do the bookies think about the Sweden's uh, Swedes chances of course they're 2-1 to one to qualify for this one and of course to win the whole thing is 100-1 to one, which is quite generous odds uh, can Sweden win well if we're going to look at it at the light of a, Dane, a Denmark and of course a Greece yes of course they can of course the returning Zlatan can boost their odds uh, of winning such a grand thing he's a winner a natural winner he's a, not only a winner. He's a, he's a motivator. He can get the, the youth uh, of, of Sweden uh, behind him, of course. And let's not just talk about, let's not talk about matey boy Zlatan, because Sweden do have some really good youngsters themselves. Of course, all the talk in Scandinavia is, of course, Haaland and all that kind of stuff. But, of course, Sweden have their own uh, young, hot, 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 and, hot, hot and talented striker, Alexander Isic, of course, on the books of Sociedad. They've even got uh, Henrik Larsson's boy. Uh, I, think, I don't know what his name is. Justin Larsson, something like that. Jordan Larsson. Jordan Larsson, of course, scoring goals for fun as well. Uh, who else? They've got Victor Lindenoff, cool, uh, calm and collective defender. And you've got uh, Emil Forsberg. Well. Some really good young players in around about mid-20s as well that, are, that could be there for at least four to six, eight years, something like that, to kind of push Sweden onto another level. And I like to see Sweden do very, very well, of course, but realistically... Can they win it? Will, will they win it? No, they won't. Of course, you've got to back one nation only and one nation. I, already, I think I've made my choice on that. But they can win it. Yes, they can if they get the favourable bounce. For me, they'll get a bounce enough, just enough to get themselves into the second round. But unfortunately, that's where the story will end uh, for them. But you know what? I could be proven wrong because Sweden are one of those nations you just don't know until the last minute has gone. Watch, did you see them in the World Cup in Russia? Completely outplayed. Well, uh, they were a little bit unlucky to, to draw with Germany, but guess what? They got out of that group. It was a difficult ass group with Mexico, South Korea and Germany, but Sweden came out on, on, on of it looking very, very uh, composed as well. There you have it, folks. There you bloody have it. If you agree or disagree, let me know your opinions out in the old comment section down below. And while you're at it, check out the description. I've got links to my other social media platforms. I'm on Twitter. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Twitch. And I'm even on Patreon if you want to support the channel in another way. Again, we'll be covering the tournament uh, extensively over the summer. Of course, we've got uh, watch-alongs, previews, predictions, of course, all of that stuff, and many, many more. So make sure you, of course, uh, smash your subscribe. And while you're at it, give the video a big, big, big old fat thumbs up. Again, I'll see you all very soon for another one tomorrow. Until then, to... Ah. Well, there you have it, folks. There you bloody have it, of course. Uh, we'll have exclusive coverage for Euro 2020 over on the channel. Of course, we'll have match previews, match reviews, of course, watch-alongs, and all kinds of stuff, including predictions as well. No. Well, there you have it, folks. There you bloody have it. If you agree or disagree, let me know your opinions in the old comment section down below. And while you're at it, check out the description. I'm on, I'm on Twitter, Twitch. Well, there you have it, folks. There you bloody have it. Of course, if you agree or disagree, let me know your opinions out in the old comment section down below. And while you're at it, make sure you check out the old description. I've got links to my other social media platforms are on there. I'm on Twitter, Facebook, on Twitch as well. And if you want to check me out at Patreon, you can check that out as well. Also, our exclusive and extensive coverage of Euro 2020 this summer on the channel. We'll have, of course, previews. We'll have predictions, of course, watch-alongs as well. And, of course, we might even get a reappearance of Cass, the predicting cat, the real cat, not DigiCass. Uh, but, of course, lots of stuff on the channel. So make sure you give the video a big old fat thumbs up while you're at it and of course make sure you smash the subscribe until then i'll see you all very soon for another one until then i'm out